Well, good morning, and we're thrilled that you're with us. Uh, for those who are watching later, hello to you as well. Uh, we keep in our prayers this day Paul and Gail McKim, Burl Ruth, Shirley Emmerich, Carol Lape, Bob Dutt, Chris Bayshore, Rod Spies, John Hopman, Kathy Shirk, Barb Kessler, Denny Bowers, Robert Gregory, uh, Larry Shermick Jr., and my friend Mark. Um, outside worship continues. Hopefully this Sunday there's a chance of showers, so you'll need to check the answering service at 8 o'clock. Uh, not before 8 o'clock. Um, I'll put something on the answering service. Uh, that way you'll know if it's on. We'll also try and put something on Facebook. Uh, but that's dependent on me getting that up there, so it could even be a Facebook post. We'll see how that works out. Uh, learning curve, you know, what can I say? <laughs> um, we will be at the pavilion, bring your own chairs, all that good stuff tonight. 7.30, Holden Evening Prayer. Uh, if you need groceries, milk, whatever, uh, if you need financial help, a uh, phone call because you're lonely, uh, please give us a call. We'll be glad to talk to you, okay? We you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, our day-to-day -day routine is so busy, so much so that we sometimes forget to stop to thank you for all that is good in our lives. Our blessings are many and our hearts are filled with gratefulness for the gift of living, for the ability to love and be loved, for the opportunity to see the everyday wonders of creation. We want to thank you for those things in our lives that are less than we would hope them to be. Sometimes life is very hard and it's a struggle to keep our heads above water. Things that seem challenging, unfair, or difficult often hurt. When our hearts feel stretched and empty and pools of tears form in our weary eyes, yet still we can rejoice that you are as near to us as our next breath, and that in the midst of turbulence, we are growing and learning. In the silence of our souls, we thank you most of all for your unconditional love. Amen. The reading this day comes from the 17th chapter of Luke's Gospel. We often hear this on Thanksgiving Eve. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Two stories to get to my point. Winston Churchill loved to tell the story about the little boy who fell off a pier into the deep ocean water. An older sailor, heedless of the great danger to himself, dove into the stormy water, struggled with the boy, and finally exhausted, brought him to safety. Two days later, the boy's mother came with him to the same pier, seeking the sailor who rescued her son. Finding him, she asked, you are the one who dove into the ocean to save my son? I did, the older sailor replied. The mother quickly yelled, then where's his hat? Many years ago, an excursion boat was wrecked in a storm on Lake Michigan, just off the shoreline near Evanston, Illinois. The students of Northwestern University came to the rescue. One student, Edward Spencer, saved 17 people from the sinking ship. After saving them and being carried to his room in an exhausted condition, he kept uttering over and over again, did I do my best? Do you think I did my best? Years later, a noted speaker was talking about this incident at a meeting in Los Angeles. Someone called out that Ed Edward Spencer was in the audience. The speaker invited him up to the platform to say a few words. Edward Spencer was now an old man with white hair. He was asked if he remembered anything particular about that night in the rescues. Spencer replied, only this, sir. Of the 17 people I saved, not one of them ever thanked me. 
How many of you remember the television show Candid Camera, produced by Alan Funt? Funt said his favorite episode, and the one that got the most mail, was the corner mailbox that talked, or seemed to. A microphone and a speaker were placed inside a mailbox in New York City. When a person dropped a letter into the mailbox, the mailbox would say, thank you. The funniest part of the episode came when an older man said he was going to call the police. Instead, he stopped another man on the street and told him about this special mailbox. The other person walked over to the mailbox, but it didn't say a word. The 10 seconds that followed and the expressions on the faces of the men got the most laughter of any program Candid Camera ever did. The reaction, the response, the expression of surprise, or whatever, that's what's wanted or appreciated, I guess. That's, I guess, why we tell jokes. We like the response a punchline elicits. Can God be any different in wanting response? Some expression of reaction, some praise, some sign of gratitude. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the one, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. In the midst of our world today, these two little words, thank you, mean so much. Let's remember to say them more often to the people who are doing normal, everyday stuff in our lives and see if it doesn't begin making a difference, because it will. We all can be more kind, more gracious, more thankful. Watch and see the difference gratitude makes, especially in a hurting world and hurting people. Thank you for all of the sharing, all of the kindness, and sharing the love of Christ in your everyday lives. Will you join me in prayer? It's the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be well, be safe, be thankful. Stephanie says thank you.